In this video, I'll show you how to customize the layout, the workspaces, and your editor types in Blender. So Blender's user interface is very customizable, and that's one thing that I love so much about Blender. So on the very top of Blender, there are these different tabs here, which are workspaces. And you can click on the different tabs, and that's going to take you to a different user interface with different views and different editor types. And so each one of these workspaces have different uses for whatever you might be doing in Blender. Like if you want to do compositing, you can jump over to the compositing tab. If you're doing animation, you can jump over to an animation tab. If you go to texture painting, it's automatically going to take you into texture painting mode but as well as using these tabs here, you can actually customize Blender and create your own custom user interface. And you can also create your own custom tabs, which I will be showing you how to do in this video. So let's say that I want to edit the material of this mesh. Well, what I could do is click over here to go to the shading workspace, but let's say that I want to do this manually. So here on the layout, what I can do is I can drag my mouse up here into any corner of Blender, and you can see in any corner of the windows, the mouse turns into a crosshair. So I can click when my mouse turns into the crosshair, and I can hold down my mouse button, and I can drag out, and you can see it's going to make a new line here. And I can actually drag this down if I want to be horizontal, or leave it up here if I want to be vertical. Then when I let go, you can see there's going to be two 3D windows because I split the 3D window. Now I can move this 3D window around. So for example, I could go to top view and then I could have this one at front view. So this could be very useful for more complex modeling or animation or things like that. But what I could also do is I can click here in the corners of any of these editors and I can change the editor type. So it's going to be right up here, this button on the left top corner of any editor. So you can see right here, there is the editor type. Also right here, this is the outliner. Also right down here right next to me that's the timeline and then right here is the 3d viewport so if i click on this button on the top left corner to change the editor type i could change this to any editor type i wanted but let's say i want to edit the material of the object so i could change this to the shader editor and now you can see it's similar to the shading workspace that i have right here and so i can click and drag to make it smaller or bigger i can even like make this really small if i want more space now let's say that I add a new material and I'm just gonna like change the color. Maybe I'll make it like a blue color and then I'll turn the roughness down. So now let's say that I wanna close this shader editor because I want the 3D window to be back into full screen. Now, one quick thing I did wanna mention, if you hold down the control key and then hit the space bar, so control space bar, that is gonna go into full screen of any editor type. So you can see the timeline, 3D viewport, and then if you hit control space bar again, that's going to go out of the full screen. So that's just something useful to know. But in this case, I don't want to go into full screen. I just want to close this window here. So what we're going to do is click right here where we clicked before to add the window. And we're going to click, but then this time, instead of dragging this way, we're going to drag the opposite way. So we're going to drag in. And you can see now it says join areas and there's a little arrow there. So if I let go, now it's going to close it. So now the 3D window is full screen again. Now I'm just gonna click to drag this out again, just to show you. So if I drag this out here, if I click and then drag way farther, you can see something else is gonna happen. So there's another feature here. Let me just hit escape. So if you just click and drag a little bit, you can close it. But if I just click and drag farther, now I can actually move this to a different space. So if I wanted like a 3D view here, I could like let go. And now there's a 3D view right there. Maybe I could like click and change this to the image editor. And then if I like click and drag it over, I could like drop this right over here so now we have an image editor here or I could drag it right over here and I could completely replace it for the collection so just drag it here and drop it in the very center and now that outliner there the outliner with the collections is gone so this is a very powerful feature in blender and I love programs that are customizable especially because I use Linux I use the Linux operating system I use Linux Mint and that's also a very customizable operating system now let's say you don't want the timeline because maybe you're not doing any animation so what you can do is you can bring your mouse right here and then click and then drag down and then let go but you can see the timeline's still going to be there so i have to click in one of these corners i'll just use this corner and i'll click drag down and then let go and that's going to close it but there is actually a faster way to do this so if i just click and drag this up again and then let's click and then drag over and then let go so you can now see we have a big window here and then right behind me or right next to me i'll change this back to the timeline so a quicker way to close this is to just right click and then you can click on close area. So I'm just right clicking on this little bar here. So right click and then just close area. And you can see now the timeline is disappeared. Now, if you want to add a new timeline, again, it's pretty easy from what I've already talked about, but let me just show you. So for example, I could click here in the corner and I could drag way down. And then what I could do is click here and I could drag over. And you can see if I try to drag all the way over, it's just going to move it. So I'm just going to drag over, let go, 
then click here, drag over, and then let go. So now you can see we have a giant window here, and then right above me, if I just change the editor type, I can just change this back to the timeline. Now earlier I mentioned that if you right click, I can just click on close area. Well, there are some other settings when you right click. So let's just move our mouse right here in the center, and this is where I can click and drag to change the size. Well, if I just right click, there's a bunch of different options. So for example, there's vertical and horizontal split. So if I choose like horizontal split, now you can see I can just move my mouse wherever I want in really any of these windows, and then just click there, and that's going to split the window. Or what I could do is click right here and then do a vertical split, and then you can see it's going to be vertical. So I can just drop it right there. But now we kind of have too many windows, so I'm just going to click here and drag over and close that. Or what I could also do is again, right click here and click on close area, and then right click, and then let's just close the area. Now, if I just bring down another window here, another way to close these is to just right click right here, and then you can either join up and join down. And so that's a little bit more intuitive. If you don't like kind of fiddling around with the corner thing here, you can just click here and then join down. Or if I split the window, click here and then join up. And also if you have a vertical split, you can do the same thing. So you can either join right or you can just join left. You can also swap the areas. So let's just say that I have this as like a 3D viewport, something like that. Well, instead of taking all the time to click here and change this to the image editor, click here and change this to the 3D viewport, you could just right click and swap areas. So that's super fast. Now there's a few other settings that you can change to make the user interface look a bit more minimalistic. So for example, this gizmo here, I believe this is turned on on default in Blender. However, I've turned it off because I use all the shortcut keys since I'm more advanced. So I don't really like using this. This is mainly just for beginners who haven't, you know, memorized all the shortcut keys. So what you can do is click on this little button here and this will hide the gizmos. Now you can also click on the overlays button. So if you click on this, it's going to hide all the overlays. So that is kind of nice, although you do need the overlays when you're modeling because you need to know what you're selecting. But what you can do is turn on the overlays and then click on the drop down arrow. And you could, for example, maybe turn off the floor if you just don't like seeing that. Sometimes I like things to look a bit more clean and neat, so I like turning that off. You could also like turn off the axes if you just really don't need that. You could also turn off the text info. There's a lot of different settings you can play around with with the overlays. Now there's also a bunch of different buttons here which you can close. Now again, I wouldn't recommend always closing these because you're probably going to need them, but sometimes I just like to close them. So if you just like right click here on the buttons, you can go to header and you can disable the menus. So you can see now the menus is collapsed. You can also just right click right here and you can like hide the tool settings and then you can right click again and you can hide the header. So again, that's just going to hide even more of those options. So you can see Blender's just looking even more minimalistic. And you can do like the same thing right down here. So I can show or hide the different headers and menus. Also right down here on the very bottom of Blender, I do like to use this most of the time because it shows me like the faces and vertices and things and also the memory it's using. But if you just right click on the very bottom bar, you can show and hide these different statistics. Or what you can also do is just click and drag down just to close that. And also if you right click here on these different options, you can go to visible tabs and you can disable any visible tabs if you just want to hide them. You can also just right click and you can go to navigation bar and you can flip it if you want to be on the other side for some reason. Or you could also go to navigation bar by right clicking and then you can just hide it if you wanted to. Now regarding the workspaces, you can actually create your own custom workspaces. And I have done this, for example, I have this assets tab. So if I click on the assets tab, I have my ultimate Blender procedural material pack with all my procedural materials. So I can just jump to the assets tab and I can quickly just drag and drop the materials onto the objects. I also have the shader editor right here, so I can quickly adjust the settings for the material. So to create your own workspace, you can scroll your mouse wheel right over here, and then you can click on the plus icon, and that is going to create a new workspace. Now you can choose the type of workspace. So if you want to create your own custom one, then I'd recommend just adding a layout. And you can see now there's a layout. So if I scroll my mouse wheel, you can see it says layout. So it's called layout.001 because there's already a layout. So I could just call this layout two. So now you can just customize it how you want. So maybe you, you want to start with a layout, but maybe you want to split the window and I could like change the different views here, something like that. You could also maybe split the window right here and you could maybe change this to the UV editor or something like that. So if there are some common like workflows that you use, you can customize Blender and just set it up how you want. However, when you close Blender, this workspace isn't going to stick with Blender. So if you want this workspace to be in all of your default startup files, then what you'll need to do is open up a new Blender file and just set it up how you want. So just like this. And then what you want to do is scroll over here and you want to click on file.
file and you want to click on default and then you want to click on save startup file and so when you click on that and click on ok then when you open up blender again this layout here is always going to be in blender and then one more thing i want to mention before i finish this video is if you right click on any of the workspaces you can duplicate them so if you just want another one you could duplicate that and now you can see we have another layout you can also right click on the workspace and you can delete it if you want to get rid of it so if you just really don't use all these tabs in blender like maybe you like never use geometry nodes or maybe you don't really ever do texture paint or sculpting you can just right click and then you can delete them and if I have a custom workspace like this layout and I want to use it a lot more often maybe I want it to be at the front of the workspaces so I can right click and then I can reorder this to front so now we have our other layout so layout 2 but maybe I don't want it to be the first layout maybe the second one I can just click on this layout and then right click and then reorder to front so now you can see this is just the second tab so you can really do so much customization with the tabs here in blender and if you are a beginner to Blender, then you might be interested in checking out my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. So it's a completely free tutorial series on my YouTube channel. And throughout the tutorial series, I teach you all the basics of Blender while creating this snowman character. So if you're interested in checking that out, the links will be in the description and it will also be right up there on the end screen. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.